Happy holidays, everybody. On today's show, we break down that Thursday night matchup, which is really just... Let's talk about Zach Wilson and how he stinks. Then we have the rest of the matchups, and we have a a shame that is in the holiday spirit. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment. Enjoy, and enjoy your holidays. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in! Welcome in, one and all, Friday, December 23rd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for following the show, hanging out with us. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to all of you out there. Our final show before... Merry Christmas, happy holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Uh, we are... We're excited. We've got a lot to talk about. we got more matchups on the fantasy forecast today, news, uh, Thursday night game that, thank goodness I benched Zay Jones in. Yeah. Oh, boy, that was that was a little bit stressful because there's a psychological component to fantasy football, a big one. I mean, lots of them. What? Lots of them. But one of them is, is simply the fact that, like, the problem with process over results, that idiom, that we bring, right? The problem with it is that it's not always right. So you will end up on the wrong side of it, is my point. It's like oh, you, sure. you can follow the process, which what, which is what I did with Zay Jones last night, right? It, like the emotional part of me was like, Zay Jones was the number one wide receiver the week before. He led me through the playoff matchup. He was awesome. And then, you know, I turned the game on last night and I'm like, you know, I'm squinting to try to see the level of precipitation, <laughs> flurries, all of the, the, the different the components, the wind. And I'm trying to determine if I would be so bold as to make a last minute pivot back into Zay Jones. And I followed the process. Mm -hmm. And now last night I was rewarded by the process. We, we talked about it on the show. You guys made some wind sound effects, <laughs> which that was, were that was live. very persuasive. And uh, and so it worked out. My point being, he could have caught a touchdown. Sure. You know, you're down around the goal line. He could have caught one of those for a touchdown. And then, you know, you could live with regret, and then you could be tempted to just not follow the process next time. So that's kind of part of what happens in fantasy. You just you stack up process after process after process, and you hope that more of them end up in your corner, and you end up on the winning side. Yeah, you want to play probabilities. 60% exactly. hit rate is going to win out most of the time. So try to make good decisions, and if you go 60-40, you'll, you'll end up with a lot of Ws. Well, it is Friday, so uh, we got a little something special to give away. Foot Clan Friday. And no, that is not Zach Wilson's job. Today we're giving away a $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com that goes to uh, South Park Cows over on Patreon. Oh, moo. So congratulations. Thank you for supporting us to join the foot.com. You have $100 to FantasyChamps.com. I have a feeling FantasyChamps.com will be getting a lot of visits in the next couple of weeks. There's going to be a lot of hashtag Foot Clan titles going around from uh, our audience, so get prepared with the trophy from Fantasy Champs. I don't know. We always talk about, like, last place punishments, but I don't know if I've heard of the one where, like, the last place team just has to buy the trophy for the league. That is so simple. It's so simple. It's elegant. Yeah. The problem there is you might end up with a less than trophy. <laughs> like, yeah, I found well, one. <laughs> I got one. Yeah. Uh, I think it has to be six inches tall. It should be agreed upon yeah. before the draft. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we've ever talked about it before for last place or first place prize punishment, but I was reminded of the um, John Hamm League. Do you guys remember that story? 
You know, uh, maybe, refresh I know he plays Mad, Mad Man, Man Man uh, star John Hamm. Man 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 <laughs> Man 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 <laughs> uh, Mr. Draper himself. Yes. Uh, in their league, the winner, like at, he's not allowed to tell anybody. Everybody comes to the draft. They get connected to the Wi-Fi. They get their laptops out, and he kicks one person out of the league. Oh! At every and you don't tell them until. They make them come they to the... They have to come the, to the draft, oh, and then no. you pick one. So he talks about like battling traffic, getting to there, opening his laptop, collecting to the Wi-Fi, and then and then they go, Ham, you're out. <laughs> so that's a little more, sa- a little more savage. That's... That's not the Christmas so that, spirit. Does that mean the champ like brings the new manager? I don't know. I oh. don't know if it's like a <laughs> one-year is, ban. You know, like you're out for a year, you're back the next year. I mean, they got to so have they a, rotate it, so you got like 13 managers, whew. right? That is that's rough. hardcore. Yeah. I mean, that's a hard. I mean, that'd make you play pretty hard. Yeah. But uh, let's get into the Thursday night recap. Jacksonville oh, let's. nineteen, <laughs> New York three. The wide receivers in this game were through and through players you didn't want to play. So you're talking about. I mean, just you would be devastated. It would be the worst start to your uh, semi championship week. Yes, as they call it. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Christian Kirk. Zay Jones. Let's All put it this way: Christian Kirk was the, and and, and Garrett Wilson were no, four and thirty, Garrett three Wilson, and twenty-two. Get, but Garrett Wilson had a fumble, and so it was the worst luck fumble he, in the history of the NFL. I mean, look, this is part of the, the the playing in the rain and everything. So if like if you played but a you wide saw receiver, it though, right? Yeah, you saw right. the the spinning kick. Yes, the yeah, bottom. Yeah. I yes. mean, I'd be kicking fumbles out if I could do it. <laughs> I'm sure they would too in football, but but they all. Were terrible, except for Schmevin Schmangram. I'm like the game I, plan was perfect. I would have been very nervous to start him because I was nervous to start anybody in this matchup. Uh, but talk like speaking directly to the process that Andy was talking about, like when you when you reevaluate. Okay, let's look back at the windy and the raining game. <clears throat> like the fact that Evan Engram. The guy who's always running the short routes, running crossers, ha- he's the one who had the success. You go, okay, yes, that that actually made sense. His particular skill set with the way that he is being utilized in this offense, it it does make sense that he came through. It doesn't make sense to me that he came through with 7 for 113 yards when the receiving high, uh, the, like Travis Etienne was the second highest receiver on the team with 29 yards. Michael Carter. Five for forty-four on the other side. Like nobody had a had a good game through the air, and Evan Engram had a fantastic day. It was ridiculous, and that's because it wasn't really through the air very often. It was it was check it down to him, misdirection, great game plan, perfect for the weather, and then he would run wild. I mean, I think he was like. Ended up sixteen and a half per catch. His average depth of target was probably two yards. I mean, yeah. the, the back of his jersey just oh. just turned to pure green. Usually, I have a really <laughs> hard time with Zay Jones and Evan <laughs> yes. Ingram because yeah. it's seven and seventeen. Yep. They're both big guys, and so I'm like, oh, it's Evan. Oh no, it's Zay, or or vice versa. Uh-huh. He did us a solid by just ruining that jersey, turning it jet green. That was great, and. Um, there was uh, obviously we we talked a lot about the wind, how it affects yep. the uh, the the passing game drastically, and that it, it kind of helps the running game sometimes, at least uh, the the cold weather. But it was nice to see Travis Etienne uh, as Mike coined last night. It's the only thing I could think of since then. The work well, pony. I like I. That was me bringing that back up. Like, yeah, I how think, dare you? Oh, that was, how yeah, dare that you? Was, was yeah. that an Andy? Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been ridiculed for it's perfect. Months, for he really, months. He really is a work pony because <laughs> he gets the the work. I mean, his utilization. You can't dream for better utilization. Uh, you know, twenty two carries, three. Well, targets. One more carry by the goal line would have been sure. Would have been would have been nice if if you wanted that. But um, he's also. He's just been banged does not up a lot. Look yeah. big enough for workhorse status. So the work pony, but he got it done. He had a very nice game uh overall for this atmosphere. When when you leave the game with twenty two points, like not fantasy, the NFL game had twenty two right. total points, he had a great fantasy output for that uh for that situation. Yeah, it was a Zonovan nightmare. Oh man. He had let's get this, six carries for negative two yards. 
I think Mike had mentioned yesterday he was shocked they weren't establishing it on that oh, side yeah. of the ball. I was too. But um, a disaster for Zach Wilson. He was benched. Uh, he had a pass rating of 41. He threw an interception. He His completions were ugly. I mean, this was uh, this was what we've come to know of Zach Wilson, and I don't think you see him start another game this year. I don't think it's guaranteed you see him start another game for the Jets ever. And this is a $34 million man, number two pick in the draft. It, it's not working. It's not coming together right. for Zach Wilson. And this, yes, the elements were tough. Trevor Lawrence showed you that you can do different things. You know, Zach Wilson is supposed to be a mobile quarterback. You tell me he couldn't have gotten outside the pocket and made some of these evasive plays or at least attempted to the way Trevor Lawrence did. I mean, people that are still apologizing for Zach Wilson, I'm sorry. Yeah, you show me something. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no, he's not good. He's just not a good quarterback. Uh, Strevler came in and moved the ball, no problem. Uh, Off the practice squad. Yeah, uh, Flacco has been better. Obviously, Mike White, I think, might be legitimately okay as an NFL quarterback. So, uh, yeah, Zach Wilson, it's time to, time to uh, hang him up hey. for a while. And you know, work on yourself and your game, and then hopefully you get another chance in the future and capitalize. I don't want to see him on the field again until there's facial hair. <laughs> okay, so we're talking like six, seven years. It's not everyone gets to grow a beard. Yeah, but but we can get further than he's gotten. And also, Mike, not everyone gets to play NFL hey, quarterbacks. That's, so that's fair. You get that sweet look of baby face. You they know, maybe don't take hits. I the New York Jets. I don't know what they possibly do with Zach Wilson because the the contract situation is you if, if you're going to cut him you are eating so much dead cap for multiple years you won't cut him no and you can't cut him you can't play him you can trade him you can trade him. Well, I mean if if they're going to Osweiler him away maybe they could do that because <laughs> I don't know that an NF there's not a franchise that is looking at what he he did and say yeah we're going to we're well, going to take that contract on who would, and Matt give you Rule's a pick. not a coach still, right? Correct. Uh, yeah, not that, in not in, in the NFL. Dang it. Yeah, I was gonna say Sam Donald couldn't have been traded, but he was. Desperate times, right? Some some coach somewhere will be arrogant enough to think they can fix him, and, and and they won't be able to. Yeah, and if you remember back a couple years ago, the Adam Gase era, how it ended, um, he won his last two meaningless games to fall to the number two <laughs> so that they could so that the Jets did not get Trevor uh, Lawrence, but they got Zach Wilson. Imagine that team with Justin Fields. Yeah. Who they, they passed on. Who they, you know, with that defense and the ability to run the football. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, Jets fans. Yeah. Jets are gonna jet. But, unfortunately. I mean, well the the the, old, the consolation is that Mike White looks capable. He's unfortunately not healthy enough to play football right now, but that I just don't. There's feel a like, lot of quarterbacks like that. I like Mike White, but he is not going to get it done in the end. Yeah, he's not winning a Super Bowl. No, no, he's 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 competent, right? He you can th you can throw him out there. He's he's like, you know, Fitzpatrick maybe. Could he get to Kirk Cousins level? No, you don't think so? No, I don't. Hmm. I don't think so. And I like Mike White. I think he's got maximum grit. But I think uh, I don't think he has enough elite skills to get you to where you want to go. And I'm he's a, he's so much better. I mean, this is a team that went to the AFC title game twice with Mark Sanchez. So can he be Mark Sanchez? Sure. They were elite defense with Mark Sanchez. But all right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. All right, Nick Chubb, managers can exhale. Removed from the final injury report. He's going to play. Hooray. The weather. Yes. Frightful. Should be a lot of carries for Nick Chubb in this game. Mm -hmm. Kind of frightens me being somebody playing against Nick Chubb. I know the over-under is not high, but how is this game not like 85% running on both sides of the ball? Yeah, I mean, obviously the teams are going to be selling out to stop the run. Uh, to me, this comes down to Nick Chubb's actual health. This was not a rest day given. This is an actual foot problem. He has not been his usual Nick Chubb efficient, awesome self in the last couple of weeks. And if he is dealing with a foot problem while teams are selling out to stop the run, I do think you have a chance of Nick Chubb having a, a somewhat disappointing fantasy game. Let me. You're not going to. 
bench him though. No, you're not. And let me let me just give you the updated weather there for that game. You, oh, re- let's you ready ha- for let's this? Have it, yes. I am. Uh, I'm looking at the from kickoff through the fourth quarter. It's the same throughout. So let me just break it down. We've got a nine degree field temperature, mm, that's which cold. with the wind chill will feel like negative twelve. Oh, brutal. <laughs> the wind is sustained twenty six twenty seven for the duration of the entire game. Yeah, that's so you you're not gonna get doesn't look like you're gonna get any rain because the wind blew it away. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Olave won't be playing in that one, so he'll be warmer on the sideline, ruled out with the hamstring injury. Jarvis Landry went from maybe gonna play to IR ending the season. You are out of wide receivers. I mean, legitimately in Saints country, you have what? Traquan Smith? Is he available? I mean, I know Rashid Shahid yes. is available, but I yeah. can't remember if Traquan is healthy right now. To be um, right now, Rashid Shahid would be the absolute uh, wide receiver of choice if this weather wasn't what it is. With the weather what it is, I mean, we just talked about with Trevor Lawrence playing well in le- in in bad, but not this bad of weather. With Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, really couldn't get it going. It, the the passing game is going to be screens. Who's catching screens, and that's not going to be enough for fantasy. So you just stay away from all receiving options in this in this game. Yeah, I mean maybe a Jawan Johnson gets opportunities the way that maybe. Evan Schmevin did. Yeah, that's true. Um, you will be able to complete some passes, but to be close to the line of scrimmage, no need for Shahid this week. Correct. Uh, Ken Walker, DMP, DMP, DMP. Now dealing with back spasms along with the ankle, and yet the team has said he is expected to play along with DJ Dallas. Yeah. And they got rid of all their other running backs. Well, yeah, the, they, they have no Travis Homer. Well, that's to say the I, the I don't know what's going on with Homer. I don't know the 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 tweet from oh, I think it was from uh, from Field had put that out, and then he deleted that tweet. Ooh. So like I I, I think there might have been some cross communications about that they uh, they did cut Tony Jones. Okay. Or wait, oh yeah. my Gosh, is that his name? I yes, think it so. is. Okay. Yes, I think we did. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, so Travis Homer might be on the team. I'm not. A, I'm not exactly sure. Right. I there was a report, like you said, that they uh, they waived him. Yes. So, I mean, that's being reported. Is that still, like uh, who knows? Does anyone in Seattle know who's on the team anymore? I think it was a mistake. I think what you what you're saying is true. I think Travis Homer is still there technically, and Tony Jones Jr. was waived. Yeah. But like Yahoo Fantasy reported that too. Yes. So it might have been a mistake. It makes more sense to not cut Travis Homer, who's been a major contributor, when you have injuries at the position. Jason, you made Ken Walker your start of the week. Are you nervous? So I, I you know, I think that you have to have a little bit of nerves when you've got a guy who could miss the game. That being said, um, I, other than the back spasms that are now new on Thursday, the the ankle issue I am not too worried about because this is not a new ankle issue. This is an ankle issue that he was resting on last week, played in the game, played very well, and then they rested him this week. So I, I'm not – like I'm, I'm still starting Kenneth Walker, but I did take him out of my DraftKings lineup because it's a cash game. We just need to be safe, and in that situation, there is always the chance that a player can, can you know – re-aggravate an injury. Pete Carroll said he expected Ken Walker, Noah Fant, and Marquise Goodwin to play. Goodwin was a DMP. He twisted his ankle in practice. Expected to be out there, but a nerve-wracking play if you put him out there. Yeah, but Pete Carroll's a filthy liar. That is also true. Uh, the good thing, it's a morning game, so you'll know. You you don't have to hold out hope for like the like the guys. If, if that were a Sunday game and the main slate is Saturday, I would be freaked out. Hollywood Brown added to the injury report with a groin ah. injury. Limited session. Stay away. Yeah. Brandon Cooks, questionable, expected to play. Hayden Hurst, questionable, probably too risky, but desperate times. Mm-hmm. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and back with the matchups. All right, we are going to dive into the remainder of the matchups. Yesterday we covered the Bills, Bears, Saints, Browns, Texans, Titans, Seahawks, Chiefs, Giants, Vikings, Bengals, Patriots, Lions, Panthers. Fantasy Forecast. If you notice anything kind of going 
more wrong today on the show. <laughs> it's because we have a tag team of uh, very interesting <laughs> deucers over there in Deucers Alley. The tag team includes one human and one cardboard bear. That, that is, is correct. Yeah, that is correct. So, you know, the human's doing a lot of the work. The bear is there for additional fantasy analysis. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we've got a... Got a holiday crew today. Has Jay Grizz ever deuced? Uh, <laughs> well, every, every day. Yeah, <laughs> in, a lot of know, berries. Well, if you you know if you haven't seen it in the woods, yeah. But like, is this his first? Uh, no, he's, no, he's, he's been hung out, out he's back been, here before. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Although normally, isn't this the time of year they'd be he'd be yes. sleeping? Yep. Atlanta five and nine taking on the nine and five Baltimore Ravens. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Baltimore minus six and a half. The over under is. 35 points. 35. We would be talking. Now, this is one of the catastrophic weather games, right? That's why that over-under is so low. Um, <laughs> catastrophe of another sort. <laughs> we we have catastrophe at quarterback. Tyler Huntley, Desmond Ritter. We'd be talking about this line. We would be talking. all If it wasn't for the Cleveland game, this line would be making all of the headlines this week. 35 is so low. <laughs> Both of these teams are going to run, run, run the football. This is why Mike loves J.K. Dobbins. I yep. do, too. Uh, he's off the injury report completely at this point. But, you know, Baltimore is favored. Atlanta is projected with 14 points. They're number one in rush rate. Baltimore is dead last in points per game over six weeks. And they said, hey, let's just take Devin Duvernay out of the equation as well. Let's eliminate weapons. So it's going to be the tight ends, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, and Demarcus Robinson, who will have targets in this game. So fantasy-wise, though. Oh, man. Fantasy-wise, it's not good. Uh, the passing game for both teams is one that with the quarterback situation. And, and there there is, you know, the, the weather is not outlandishly bad and impossible, but it is not good. You're yeah. talking about, you know, it's going to be in the teens, uh, with winds just under 20 miles an hour, 15 to 20. So um, I'm not interested in any Desmond Ritter targets. I will say that Drake London, uh, last week you had two weirdly different things happen. You had Drake London kind of have a, a pretty good game, get all the targets. He was who seven Desmond for 70. Seven for 70. Seven for 70. Desmond Ritter did not throw for 100 yards, if my memory is serving me. And that's kind of crazy. So it's like a 70% market share of of the yards. So I'm not playing uh, Drake London because was, of Desmond Ritter. It was a 42% target share. That, I mean, And it, he had 100% of the wide receiver yards. Yeah, it was just insane. So <laughs> I, I, I don't think you can start any Falcons receivers, any Ravens receivers not named Mark Andrews. I know, Andy, you're in on uh, uh, Isaiah Likely. <laughs> but... Uh, um, I'm just looking at the running games, and I think both running games can be started. Yeah, I mean... 97 do, yards for Ritter last week. Yeah. Because of the wind, are you eliminating Demarcus Robinson from contention? Because he's been a six-target or better guy in recent weeks, and Duvernay's gone. Um, for me, I am eliminated him because, because of the weather. <laughs> eliminating him. Eliminate some ham. Um, you say six targets. uh Six, six, and eight targets. That has turned into uh, 3.9, 7.7, and 7.6 fantasy points. If it were Lamar, I'd be more interested. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this but is Isaiah not... Hodgins in the Minnesota game. Would you play him over DeMarcus? Yes, I yes. would. Yeah. Huh. yeah like if, I'm getting, if I'm getting crazy at all in this Baltimore-Atlanta game, it's it would be like, do I think that the game script is going to get out of control and that the Ravens are going to be able to run a ton and, like, Gus Edwards is going to come in and get, I don't know, thirty five percent. Maybe maybe he gets a hot hand. He gets up to forty percent. I think he is the only like sneaky play mm -hmm. from from this matchup for me. Yeah, and and they, uh, I believe Kenyon Drake was a healthy scratch he was. last week, so they really did make this. They turned this into a two man rotation for the most part. The Washington Commanders seven six and one take on the ten and four forty nine ers DraftKings Sportsbook line San Francisco. Minus six and a half, the over-under is just 37 and a half in this game. It doesn't give the commanders a lot of points either. 15 and a half projected. San Francisco's defense is uh, a problem. It's going to be a problem for Taylor Heineke. 
uh, it, it's hard to make the decision about Terry McLaurin this week. What are you, what are you doing with Terry McLaurin, knowing that you know the Forty Nine ers defense in terms of total fancy points given up to wide receivers? That is the area where there is some to be had. Is McLaurin in your lineup? Uh, McLaurin is in my lineup. Yeah, he he's still getting the targets. He's obviously uh, an extremely talented player. And if you're going to beat the 49ers, who I expect to be up in this game, you're going to have to throw the ball. So, you know, a DFS dart throw on Jahan Dotson. Um, I'm not relying on him in a fantasy playoff week, but I do think that Terry McLaurin, there are, there are worse matchups than the 49ers for Terry McLaurin to go up against. Yeah, since week seven, that's when Taylor Heineke came in. I mean, he's been north of of a 20% target share every week, averaging a 30% target share in that, that time. I know that Dotson is back, so we, we saw 22% target share for Heineke this past week, but you, you give me those, you give me that amount of the of the, uh, the passing attempts with what Terry can do on the field, he's he's still in play. I'm, I'm not, you're not playing him going, yeah, Terry McLaurin's a top 12 guy this week, but I think that he's in as a, as a lower end too. Um, other situations in this game that you're looking at, Brian Robinson facing a stout and difficult San Francisco defense. You know, McCaffrey's in your lineup, but Brian Robinson, non, non pro bowler, Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of that? Uh, it's just nonsense. Yeah. I he mean, like a big snub. I, I understand we, in sports we get, you know, you, you get tired of greatness, which is, a strange thing, and it's a huge, I mean, I it happens to all of us. You can't but, just give it to Jordan but, every year, right? Right. But the fact that he is leading the NFC in scrimmage yards at the running back position, and he didn't get in, and then the the other guys behind him all made it in. It's very strange. Very strange. Yeah, Miles Sanders, Saquon Barkley, are the rushing yardage leaders by a good margin over him. Yeah, I think but, that's what they focused on, unfortunately. Which is weird. So I they're, know. They're I like, know. I'm just, eh, we're just telling those you. receiving yards? Nah. Um, nah. Who needs those? Man, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you why. Well, I'm did saying it. it's wrong. I do think that you can consider benching Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson because this consider. matchup is. Okay, well, you, let's go ahead. And we'll find some names. This here. matchup is really brutal against, you know, the 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 best or the second best. Uh, defense, and if you're going to have, you know, you've got four, 15 and a half implied team total points from Vegas, uh, uh, somewhat of a timeshare in a terrible matchup where you are probably yeah, not, going to be losing. I just don't know that there's a lot of upside. I here think there's for you. none. I think, like, there's, I, like, I think there's no upside for I, Brian Robinson. There, I, there's been no running back that has gained 60 yards against San Francisco this year. None. I question. You know, you talked about getting crazy with Gus Edwards. I, I don't want to do that, but I, that's like a legit question to say who's going to have more fantasy gotcha. points, Gus Edwards or Brian Robinson. So if you've got, you know. Uh, Deion Jackson? Yeah, I would go Deion Jackson. I would go Devin Singletary. Wow. Uh, DeAndre what about Swift, the, uh, Pacheco. The Falcons fellas. So Cordero Patterson yep. or Tyler Algier. Yeah, I'll play both. I mean, it, it those, those are really – those are really close. I, I think that you have probably a better touchdown opportunity with Brian Robinson just because of the Desmond Ritter thing, so that's coin flip. Okay. McCaffrey's in. We said it. Brian Robinson, question. George Kittle, four for 93 and two touchdowns last week. That has to feel like a uh, a nice momentum situation heading into semifinal week. Yep. The matchup is bad, but uh, the splits when George, when George Kittle's on the field and one of the wide receivers – are missing, George Kittle has big games. The most popular start sit question on our website, thefantasyfootballers.com, Brock Purdy, Gardner Minshew. Oh, my gosh. So That's a great question. The Washington defense on the season are second. They are the second worst matchup in schedule adjusted points at the quarterback position over the past six weeks. Seventh. I mean, like, this Washington defense, if they are, they're stout. They, they, they're not giving up fantasy points. I, yeah, I think I'd go Gardner. It was Gardner Minshew, Brock Purdy. Yeah, I'd go Minshew. Okay. Speaking of Minshew, Philadelphia thirteen and one, taking on the ten and four Dallas Cowboys. 
The DraftKings Sportsbook line right now, Dallas minus 4.5. The over-under is 46.5. This is a rematch. Philly won with Jalen Hurst 26-17 to in week six. Without Dak, right? I believe that was a... Is that a Cooper Rush game? Yeah. So, uh, we yeah, we're not going to... It might be the playoffs before you see these two teams with their both having full-strength quarterback situations. Philly can lock up the number one seed and a bye with the win. Dallas, they are currently the fifth seed. So two teams that play very fast. No Jalen Hurts, though. And so, you know, you really are hoping that Gardner can do enough with the weapons he has to keep up in this game. You know, you were looking at this as one that had a lot of offensive upside because of the quarterbacks. And so if you wanted a huge CeeDee Lamb game, Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott, Dalton Schultz, who, you know, a lot of people are counting on this week. You know, you hope that Gardner and A.J. Brown and Devontae can keep up. Yeah, I mean, the the issue here is that you have two good defenses in a divisional matchup, and sometimes these turn into real slugfests and could be disappointing. But you also have two good offenses and you have a controlled weather environment. So for this week, I think this is a game you want pieces in despite the fact that it's Gardner Minshew leading the way for the Eagles. Um, when you're looking at guys like A.J. Brown that's just so physically dominant, I don't really worry at all. He's not a, con he's not a question just because Gardner Minshew is there. He's in your lineup to me. Uh, Miles Sanders will probably get the ball more. They're not going to be able to run. Minshew is... Uh, mobile, but he, he they can't run the offense that they run with Jalen Hurts with so many designed runs because Minshew is so far away from that kind of athleticism. Let's talk about Miles Sanders a little bit more. The experience with Miles Sanders has been ridiculous. 28 fantasy points two weeks ago. Great. Scored two times, three targets, 28 fantasy points. Let's put him in a really plus matchup against the Chicago Bears. 1.4 fantasy points. He fumbled <sighs> one target. 11 attempts. Um, this just puts some fear. I think you're kind of stuck with Miles Sanders if you have him at this point. Yeah. Looking through the game log for Miles Sanders it's it's been all or nothing really. Uh, but I, I, I think you keep playing him and last week the they scored 48 points against the Giants, so they saw something that they could exploit, and that was a lot of uh, Jalen Hurts running the ball. But I, I would still stick with Miles here, even even being that upset. He's had a fantastic season, just so many finishes as a as a top 24 guy, multiple finishes as a top 10 option. I'd stick with him. Now, Jason, what would you do? Would you do Gardner or Geno this week? <laughs> Um, I am. Let me just say, Dallas's starting cornerbacks, Anthony Brown um, and Lewis, are both out. Don't do this. Um, the the injuries to the Seahawks <laughs> with Kenneth Walker and Goodwin and uh, even Noah Fant. Like he has to have more than DK Metcalf to throw the ball to. As of right now, I am trying to stick to my uh, thoughts. Of the original thought is strongest I know that Gino's going to have to throw the ball a lot in that game so I am sticking with Gino as of now and I just can't wait for this weekend to be over <laughs> Dallas Goddard are you nervous to plug him right back in would you play him over Darren Waller against Pittsburgh um I am a little bit nervous not because of the injury necessarily but it's also a really bad matchup the Cowboys um can guard him can you know I, I they've got the personnel to do it the last six weeks they've given up the second fewest points to the tight end position and then you you do have the fact that like when you see a player come back for instance Darren Waller last week you're probably not playing a full snap count so I, I think that Dallas Goddard is someone that you could play as a low-end tight end but if you've got another good option and I think Darren Waller Knox. is I would play Darren Waller over Goddard and then when it comes to Goddard versus Knox you know the weather uh, in that of, game is going to be a problem. Yeah, I'm scared of the weather is what I was about to say. So I I, I, I would go Waller, Goddard, Knox. Mike, are you in agreement there? Yeah. Well, what I about, might go Knox. I might go back to Knox with the targets. What about Gerald Everett against the Colts? Gerald Everett is, is interesting because I, th I think he's actually got a good path this week, but I'm afraid to say it because – He's, you know, he can go out he's there. had a lot of good paths. Yeah, he's had a lot of good paths that he hasn't taken advantage of. Now that the weapons are back, I mean, Justin Herbert's not going to throw five touchdowns and 500 yards. Everyone in that game can't have 
a good game. It could go uh, Everett's way. I, if if you're asking Dallas Goddard or Gerald Everett, that's what I'm asking. I would, if it was my team, I would put Gerald Everett in. I would play Dallas Goddard. The Raiders are six and eight. They take on the six and eight Pittsburgh Steelers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Pittsburgh minus two. The over under is thirty eight. Let's get out of these thirties. My goodness. Well, um, well then put a roof on it. <laughs> uh, the Steelers <laughs> lose this game, which they are favored by two. If they lose it, it will be their first losing season since two thousand and three. That will be eighteen straight con straight seasons. It'll also be the Let's first go with one without a Big Ben in a while. No, they had the the one a few years back where it was uh, Mason Rudolph and uh, uh, who was uh, Duck Duck uh, yeah uh, Duck Dynasty whatever Hod Hodges uh, Duck Hodges something that, like that is that a human yeah uh, yeah he went by Duck. <laughs> this is the uh, Christmas Eve evening game. Technically, both teams are still alive in the playoffs. It will be cold. It will be run focused, I think. Najee Harris, what a season he's had. Zero games with 12 fantasy points through the first eight weeks. Goes on the bye, comes back, and is now the running back 10 at 13.7 fantasy points per game. And that is even with seeding some work, including a touchdown to Jalen Warren last week. So, you know, Najee and Jacobs, I think you can confidently put them in. Agreed. You know, you, you saw what Ramondre did with a bum ankle last week against the Raiders. He, he had the most rushing yards of his season. Yeah, the the Raiders on the season adjusted for schedule are the literal worst against uh, running back. So, uh, Najee is a good play this week, and Jacobs is a great play no matter what every week. Devontae Adams, you just have to hope it gets back to normal for him, yeah. and it, he's it, been he's been dominant the whole season. So you you play him, and we just talked about Darren Waller quite a bit. He played forty nine percent of snaps, had the touchdown. Uh, you know, you're looking at this with an implied point total of eighteen. I think he's a risky play, but he's probably one you. You're going to have out there in most situations. He's probably safer than the Muth. Taysom Hill or Darren Waller? That's what a lot of people have. You know, if you drafted sure. Waller, you've literally spent the whole year trying to find a better option at tight end. So the Waller managers have a hard time because they actually have secured and found that other option. Yeah, I mean, obviously in PPR leagues, it's a little bit better for Waller on the Waller-Taysom Hill because you you know he's going to have a few receptions. But, man, he just hasn't had much outside of week two where he had six receptions, obviously missed a, a bunch of the year. But he's been – when he's been out there on the field, three receptions, three receptions, zero receptions, three yeah. receptions. It's not a high-volume play, but he has an option at a tight end. I think I would I, – I lean towards the Taysom side this week. I think he's going to get eight to ten carries and has just as good a chance of one of those being for a touchdown. Uh, both, to me, are fine starts this week, though. I feel like we have a lot of tight end talk going on with all of these tough decisions. And the Muth on the other side, he just goothed you, which you don't want to be goothed. No, it feels bad. He goothed me right out of the playoff. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you're willing to get goothed again. Yeah, but I mean, it's just how far down the barrel you're going to go, and and you know the the matchup. It's okay against the Raiders. Deontay Johnson's been banged up. You could look at that and say, well, he's supposed to play, but you know what if he's not 100 percent? George Pickens is low volume, so you know the Muth could bounce back, and and maybe it's kind of like the Zay Jones situation in reverse, where you you play the situation. Um. You follow the process, and you hope you get a better result. It, it, it was Mitchell Trubisky last week, so you had a pretty big variable come in through there where the weeks before that, I mean, not not pretty, but 3 for 33, he scored the touchdown on the slant route. Before that, it was 3 for 76, 3 for 39. Uh, and uh, this was, you know, kind of during the injury time where he's uh, he's been dealing with that foot problem. It's if you made it through with the zero, it is very difficult to put an injured player back out there. I I, I believe that Pat Fryermuth has a has an okay game. This isn't, I mean, Pat Fryermuth isn't one of these guys all season. that's like you absolutely have to start. He's so dominant. There's really only you know Kelsey. So you've got questions every week. But the practice report this week: full participant Tuesday, full participant Wednesday, full participant Thursday. So he's been out on the yeah. field. Now they get uh, Pickett back. I. I guess that that does help. The the he didn't have an injury designation. 
yeah. last week. Yeah. I, I know he missed multiple days, but then they said he's good to go. The fact that you're getting in full practices, maybe, maybe it's a little, maybe it's okay. Trubisky's gone. Fire me, uh, you know, to me, he is a, a low end uh, tight end starter. Greg Dulcich. I would oh, go. Yeah, Muth. I would go Muth. Muth. Okay. Christmasfootball.com time. We got Christmas games. Three of them. Green Bay, six and eight, taking on the eight and six Miami Dolphins. Miami are the three and a half point home favorites. The over under is fifty over on DraftKings. I love that. I want to see fifty. 26.8 points versus 23.3. Uh, highest total of the week. It's the only one in the 50s, and it's right there on the dot. And uh, maybe that's because the weather is in the 50s as well, so that helps. Uh, number one, Miami in 15-plus yard pass plays. Big play team. Can save your week with one or two plays over the course of the game. So, Tua, I know it's been a struggle. This has been a streaky team. It's been a streaky quarterback. Win three. Lose three. Win five, lose three. Uh, this is – you just have to play your studs in this one, and that means Tyreek and Jalen Waddell are in there. Yeah. Uh, the matchup is great. You know, Green Bay has been a, a pretty rough defense over the course of the year and much more in the last six weeks. Raheem Mostert. This is where the questions are. I am feeling more confidence in Raheem Mostert because we found out that that was a veteran's rest day. And so – And Jeff Wilson limited – uh, Wednesday and Thursday with his hip issue. They, now, they said he was close to playing yeah. the last week against Buffalo, but... He's not going to be close to playing on my fantasy team. Jeff Wilson? Jeff Wilson. Okay. But Mostert, you're starting with confidence? Mostert, I'm, I'm starting with optimism. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That, that, I, I like a, there's that. a difference okay. there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but Wilson was, you know, these two guys being healthy the way it was trending, Wilson would have been the one you were more confident in, but right now, Mostert had a huge game. I mean, he's been... There's been some chunk plays from Raheem Mostert. It's a 26th ranked run defense, 29th over the last six weeks. I think you have to play him, and in the Veterans Day, instead of it being an injury, is is key. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at uh, Raheem Mostert, is a perfect example of a player that if you've been using Brian Robinson, that level of a player, I, I would yes. put Raheem Mostert in uh, over and above. And I it it is nice to see. I don't know when this started happening. I feel like the teams have always had to just list the practice reports like oh it's a foot everything is being listed as you know complete on the actual injury report no injury so I like that yeah me too eight a carry for Mostert last week against Buffalo let me let me paint the Aaron Rodgers picture for you before oh, you discuss man. right here's the pros of Aaron Rodgers this week high total game right mm -hmm. the highest of the week no weather issues Miami secondary ranks in the bottom seven of almost every pass defense metric mm-hmm Miami has, uh, they've seen the third most pass attempts against them. Here are the cons. Aaron Rodgers has failed to score 20 fantasy points in any game this year. Oh, man. Only one three touchdown game on the season. His two best finishes, let's call them his ceiling. Quarterback 10 and quarterback 12. Now, you could get the best game of the year here. Yeah, you if could. If you want to make another, you want to put another one in the pros category, Dobbs, Watson, Cobb. All healthy, all playing. I think this – is this the first? Second game where he's well, had that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, well, Dobbs was, like, questionable. We weren't sure. He played very limited snaps. Like, if they actually all play a full allotment of snaps, I think that will be the first of the of the year. I think the nice thing about this game is that we expect the Miami Dolphins, Vegas expects the Miami Dolphins to score. They have 26.8 implied points. You've got Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. So should they go out and put up 24, 25, 30 points against the Packers and the Packers are forced into the situation where they've got to throw the ball, they've got to catch up, they've got to go try to win this game, they actually have the weapons to do it. And I don't think the Dolphins' defense is good enough to stop all the weapons with this version of Aaron Rodgers. So to me, Aaron Rodgers, currently my quarterback 12. He's like the last. <laughs> he is the last yeah, of the right. of the starters. I'm not going to play him over, you know. What uh, about Derek Carr against Pittsburgh or Aaron Rodgers? I would play Aaron Rodgers. What about, uh, oh my gosh, Rodgers. It has been so Aaron bad. Aaron Rodgers, when you pull his profile up, it doesn't look like you're looking at a quarterback. No. I'm serious. It, look, it, it looks like you're looking at a middling running back. Okay, mm -hmm. against another quarterback who's been disappointing, Tom Brady. Who gets the Arizona Cardinals? Give me on the Brady. Road. I have Brady ahead of Rodgers. Okay. Gardner. I have uh, Rodgers ahead of Gardner. Yeah, that's how I would do it. Oh man. Maybe Aaron Rodgers isn't 
capable anymore. Uh, maybe. It is possible. It, it And then so at the wide receivers for Green Bay specifically, like how do you – how are you managing that where – the like Romeo Dobbs was the leader last week because basically because none of them really did anything. They were all very close. Uh, like Christian, no scores though, right? I believe that's yeah, I believe so. I think Aaron Jones got the touchdowns, correct? And, and uh, AJ Dillon, but Watson was close to a touchdown. Lazard was close to a huge play. Like they're so it's not like the opportunities aren't there. They're just not hitting on them. So are you playing any of those wide receivers this week? Watson. Yeah, Christian Watson is okay. the only wide receiver I'm playing. The reason is because you don't really know for sure where the targets are going to go. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take the explosive athleticism, the guy that can take a screen to the house, the guy that can just be taller and 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 bigger and stronger when you're near the goal hey, line. Just, just go out there and be taller. Yeah, taller than the other people. So, um yeah, Christian Watson is I, I think he's a good play because obviously we know he's a touchdown machine. He well, had, the, high, he the, had the highest target share of the Packers last week. Yeah, this isn't Rodgers where you knew three touchdowns was always coming and then you distribute them. This is like Rodgers where one touchdown is coming. You hope you get the right one. Right. Big Mike against Indianapolis, my start of the week, or Christian Watson, Jason? Mike Williams. I, I like him a lot this week. Pity City or Christian Watson? That's a real. That's exactly where I see them. I'm going to go... I honestly, I, I I hope this isn't a cop out. If I need a big game, I'm putting Christian Watson in. If I am the favor, I th I think the floor is higher with Michael Pittman. Either way, I'd go Watson. Slayton, start of the week at Minnesota, or Watson. Watson. Yeah. What about Zay Jones? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, uh, I think we covered this one. Aaron Jones. I mean, come on. Play Aaron Jones. Yeah. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Are you, I guess, are you playing A.J. Dillon? Over Brian Robinson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I think he's in play. Give me some players from a, a high over-under game this week. I need him to, to balance out some things. A.J. Dillon's been an RB1 three straight weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You hear that? <laughs> Dude, you hear that, folks? I didn't. I didn't realize he had a. <laughs> he's he's on fire. <laughs> NBA Jam rules say you play him. Yeah, yeah. All those people that drafted him are thrilled. You mean all the people that picked Scoops him up, got him off the waiver that. wire? None of the people that drafted him have AJ Dillon right now. That is correct. It's all a good experience. Denver four and ten take on the four and ten Rams. Russell Baker. I mean, this is not the Christmas present you wanted. However, it's the one we all deserve. Four thirty Eastern. I should be right in the middle of a meal around uh, this game, so maybe I can miss some of it. Um, they're both eliminated. They both don't have their first round picks. Oh man! Uh, this is. I mean, you 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 tank. If, you can't tank because you tank for the other team you traded your pick to. I actually do love that. I love that these teams want to win to make someone else's pick worse. I mean, are we down to the point now with, I mean, do, do you play anyone on the Rams? Because you've lost Ben Skoronek. <laughs> this is an amazing Broncos defense. Yeah. Cam, I don't, I don't want to play any of them, including Cam Akers. I was going to say Cam Akers is like, has, he's worked himself back into contention with, uh, he's been a top 24 guy the last three weeks. He had the boom week against. Uh, Seattle with the multiple touchdowns a fringe top 24 guy the past couple weeks because he's getting decent enough opportunity but that decent enough opportunity was against the Raiders and the Packers and and Seattle and now it's against Denver so I think I'm out do yeah. you do you play Brian Robinson Jason who you're worried about over Cam Akers I do play Brian Robinson over Cam Akers I think that you've got a, a higher even though the the matchup is more difficult, I think that the Washington Commanders will score more points, more goal line opportunities. This game has an over under of thirty six and a half. DraftKings has the line Denver minus three. Latavius Murray, he didn't practice on Thursday, so that is a precautionary sit. But was twenty four for one thirty and one. The matchup is great. Yeah, you. I, if he's in, I'm playing him. I think he'll just get. Just a crap ton of volume. And if for some <laughs> That's reason... That's what you want. Yeah. yeah. Give it, me that crap ton. <laughs> and he's fully expected to play from everything that I've seen. Um, if for some reason he's a surprise inactive, then scoop up Marlon Mack and play oh, him because man. the volume will be there. I agree. And that welcome to the playoffs. Marlon Mack, semi-week. Yeah, oh, I mean, but man. Greg D, I wouldn't, rock, I wouldn't risk hey. it. No. 
Uh, Jerry, Judy, I would be willing to play this week. Oh, really? you're not playing Dulcich? I'm not playing Dulcich, no. I The the, the variability in the, the low over-under concerns me. I just think you're high, high risk here. Do you yeah. disagree? I high, mean, the- high risk, high reward. I mean, you've got a guy, obviously, that we've seen several times have a, a long reception of 38 yards, 39 yards, 30 yards. So you can get a chunk play from Greg Dulcich, which, you know, not most most tight ends you can't get that. So I think it's high risk, high reward. Chance uh, at one, chance at 10. That's kind of what you're looking at with Greg D. And I think there's probably better options. I would agree with that. M- most of the um, – every, every league I'm in ever, that I'm still in the playoffs – uh, when I look at just my my rankings, there are enough other tight ends that I prefer over Greg Dulcich. Where I'm, I'm not playing him this week. Everett, but he's not, yeah, Everett. I would prefer over. What him. about Trey McBride? No, no. With uh, no, you didn't like what you saw last week. No, no. It was I, it was a big improvement for Trey McBride last week, and Hollywood's out, so I brought his name up. So yeah, it's a matter. It was his of, best game of his career. Sure, well, well, to well, me, it's. I think he had four catches. It's very he's difficult. Playing every snap, it's, it's just looking at it. With, with the quarterback situation in Arizona, if you're yeah. not DeAndre Hopkins, oh, yeah, he, I'm not playing you. He he hit a he hit a Sammy Hagar. He you know couple of uh, rook- I I brought him up because it's a couple of rookies and and you're looking at yeah he was uh, four for fifty five, eighty six percent of snaps, and if Hollywood's out, you can hit it. You can hit it. It's Christmas. I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, yeah, no, I love I love that that's happening and that you see flashes because I really like Trey McBride going forward. But I, I'm not relying on McSorley. Yeah, that's that's fine. You're relying on – you do realize you're relying on Russell Wilson, though, right? Well, so here – Russell Wilson is actually a question, and it's a question that I'm going to answer with a no. <laughs> is that some Perd Happily action right there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Perd Happily. That was amazing. <laughs> but, Wait, you got to do it with the cadence and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Russell Wilson is a question, and that question I'm going to answer right now. So – the, the I I would not I would not <laughs> I enjoyed fault, that so much I would not fault someone for having just stones I don't have yeah. and saying Russell Wilson last we saw him had a monster game three passing touchdowns fifty seven rushing yards looked good and the matchup is great if you can do it I don't blame you and I could see a path where he ends up with a good game I cannot do it. I will not be able to trust but Russell you, Wilson. But if you can see the path, then can't you see the path for for the D? Well, sure. I mean, that's why I said high risk, high, re- high okay. reward with the D. Always, always. <laughs> uh, listen, we're talking Tampa Bay six and eight. The Cardinals four and ten. The aforementioned Trey McBride and company. Trace McSorley getting his first start of his career. I have kind of a hot take on. Trace McSorley. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, don't do I, it. I, I guarantee he scores more than 20 fantasy points in this game. Okay. That's, what? That's my hot take. That isn't a hot take. That is a nuclear. He better be in your DraftKings lineup. I would imagine he is so cheap. If you get 20 fantasy points from Trace McSorley. Yeah, I think it will be a little bit better than people expect. I don't know. I don't expect 20 Ari- points will be a lot better than people expect. Tampa Bay is favored by seven and a half. The game's in Arizona. The over under is 40 and a half. This is what we get to enjoy on. Christmas night. Trace McSorley played 46% of the snaps last week. Did he score one fantasy point? He scored .6 fantasy point. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is probably a wrong bet, a bad bet yeah, maybe. I wouldn't, but I, mean, I, but I, I think the game plan will involve his legs, and I think because of that, you know, I don't know how many fantasy points Chris Strebler scored last night in, in half of a game, but I think that there's going to be some opportunities. DeAndre Hopkins will get targeted a lot. And uh, just being the kind of quarterback, which is a bad pass or good runner, I, I'm just expecting a surprise there. Look, the that's good all. the good news for that's what you, a surprise is. You don't expect it. Sure, no, that's that's that's. Well, but now I do, and it's not a surprise anymore. That's a lot of fire. Um, which I yeah, look, I mean, this is the season where there's a lot of coal around. Sure. And so Trace McSorley seems like coal in your stocking. Maybe you're going to warm that up, have a hot fire. The thing that's going to help that is that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're just a bad team. Uh, Don't analyze it, Mike. Their it's defense. A barbecue joke. <laughs> their defense um, is not good. They're 25th on the season against fantasy quarterbacks. So, uh, you know, if this was Kyler, we would be dreaming about the matchup here. Um, if this was Colt McCoy, we'd be having questions about his viability yeah. as a legitimate streamer. That's fair. Um, I personally have seen 
only horrific play from Trace McSorley going back to college. So I, I can't rely on him. Uh, I think they're going to no, use James. Please don't. Please don't rely on him. I think they're going to use James Conner a lot in this game. His utilization has just been outrageous. <clears throat> I mean, you're talking Christian McCaffrey levels of snaps and involvement. The last three games, 97% of snaps, 95% of snaps, 91% of snaps for James Conner. Yeah, he, he's in a tough situation where, you know, the defense is going to focus on him because yeah. that's what I would do. So uh, they're going to make Trace McSorley do something. James Conner will be the focus, but the volume is so good that you've got to play him. Fournette, Rashad White. Man. Um, Fournette played more snaps last week. Both. 14 opportunities for him. Rashad White had 11. Um, looking at opportunities on the ground, guess what? That was 11 for Rashad White. They were all carries. It's which was really, disappointing. It's really the opportunities through the air that, that matter. And if you want to know if uh, Leonard Fournette, is he still dumping like a truck? Since he came back from his injury, seven targets, seven targets, four targets. He's still dumping like a truck, and I think you can play <laughs> I think you can play Leonard Fournette uh, you know, with confidence. Yeah, and Rashad White, last week just two targets, but the previous three weeks, nine, eight, and five. Yeah, I think he's still playable. It, so who would you start between those? Are you are are we back to starting Fournette over Rashad White? Not yeah, me. Uh, I think I am. That, that's where I am as well. Fournette over over White, but I see them very similar. Mike Evans, Jason, start of the week needs 112 receiving yards for a ninth consecutive thousand yard season. Let's go, Mike. Chris Godwin, play him. Play yeah. Evans. Play Godwin. Mike. Uh, Mike has Kate Otten as the start of the week at tight end. It is. Uh, it's always going to be risky business. Yes. with a youngin. But I like him more than Greg D. Uh, I'll be right. honest with you. I think the Cardinals, the fact that they give up more, I, mean, I think they're at 14 touchdowns or something this year, given up to the tight end position. So uh, we don't expect, do we expect Julio Jones back out on the field? Does it take he's, Russell Gage out of contention? He, uh, Julio, we know that he's getting in limited practices. If, if he doesn't play and you need to break the glass, Russell Gage would be interesting. People still want to hear about DeAndre Hopkins. We've, we talked about it yeah. over the course of the week. I think you're going to get five or six catches for some amount of yards, lower than normal odds of a touchdown. But if Hollywood's out, I mean, you're going to get a lot of targets to DeAndre sure. Hopkins. All right, Monday Night Football, a.k.a. Mike Simi Championship Sweat. <laughs> Chargers 8-6, and six, Colts 4-9-4. and four. No, they're not 4-9-4. Four, <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> four nine and four. Hey, you Kyle's caught it. not even. I thank goodness you right? did catch it. Four nine and four. <laughs> Freaking they, they Kyle. Have four ties on the year. Goodness gracious! <laughs> I was a soccer. I was I was about one syllable into the palindrome oh. joke before I realized that oh, that was a man a typo. They've no. also played their entire season already. That'd be four nine and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Los Angeles minus four and a half. The over-under is 45.5. Let's get some more Jeff Saturday out there in the primetime game. Monday night football. Chargers on the verge of the playoffs. You got to love to see that. See, that's where, uh, you know, Justin Herbert, it's been up and down for fantasy. But we all know Justin Herbert, the, the NFL quarterback, is is really, really good. He's a special player. And I'm, I want to see him in the playoffs. I want to see what he can do with these weapons in the playoffs because they're the type of team that could surprise, right? They could come out and really like Both they did directions. to like yeah, like they did to Miami though, where their defense looked horrible and then all of a sudden the 10 for 2 or 10 for 28 to uh Herbert is my start of the week. Indianapolis is allowing a league high 81% of opponents to go uh take that red zone trip and turn it into a touchdown. Austin Eckler, yep, Mike Williams, give it another go. Keenan Allen PPR friend of the week. Absolutely. Gerald Everett, we've talked about it. Jason feels like there's an opportunity here, but it's uh, there's a lot of mouths to feed, right, in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, of mouths to feed, and like I said, you, I, I, I love Mike Williams this week. Keenan Allen is locked and loaded. Eckler is, a, is obviously going to get his reception. So it's really one of those things where I don't think Everett is someone you can rely on. I, You know, if I'm playing in my fantasy playoffs, there are probably – we've talked on this show already of players that I'd prefer to have, to, the Taysom Hills. Um, I, I, I could see a path for him getting one of the touchdowns and just uh, really upsetting other players 
um, who are starting Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Hope so. I guess we're hoping Everett doesn't have a good game. Uh, yeah, Chargers ninety four percent chance of making the playoffs right now. Nick Foles will start for the Colts. He will have the luxury go wrong? of Zach Moss and Deion Jackson in the backfield. He will have Michael Pittman, who is now tied for sixth in the lowest yards per reception of a wide receiver with 120 targets over the last 23 uh. years. So if you you know he's almost just a check down Charlie at this point. Yeah, which is very frustrating. But if you get enough of them, and, and the incompetence of Ellinger, Ellinger, sorry. Yes, yeah. there Thank we go. And um, Matt Ryan, like, it can't be worse. That's what we'll say. Well, that's what we'll hope. You've got a game where they are projected to score 20 points still in this one at home. You know, I think Pittman's okay. I think Pittman's okay. Yeah. Which is a high praise. <laughs> He can go as high as pump okay. The brakes over there. He can go as high as okay, and he can go as low as okay. Yeah, he's somewhere between okay and maybe all right. Yes, um, that's true. So you know, he does have that range. Uh, that's why I saw you know when comparing him to Christian Watson, I I think he's got a higher floor, but he does not have the ceiling. Deion Jackson, Zach Moss decision. On one hand, if you go with Zach Moss, you will be the guy that went with Zach Moss, mm -hmm. which will be potentially embarrassing. On the other hand, Deion Jackson, we just don't know how indicative of a normal game plan last week was. They were up 33 to nothing. They were trying to burn clock. That just seems like Zach Moss's wheelhouse. If you want three and out, Zach Moss can give you three and out. And so Deion Jackson's more talented, better PPR player, got the earlier snaps, had the fumble. I still lean that direction. I know you lean the Deion Jackson direction. I definitely lean Deion Jackson over Zach Moss. I can see it going the other way because we don't know what Jeff Saturday might do. But if the Chargers Ain't get that up, the truth. if the Chargers get up in this game and you're needing to pass the ball and you're needing explosive plays, you're you're needing to come back and score. You're not going to play the tuba and roll out Zach Moss if you want to try to get down the field in a hurry. Yeah, there's Zach Moss going. To to be fair, or to 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 put some criticism to that argument, that's rational. Mm. What you just said is like what most people in the NFL would go with. But there are some guys out that we got Arthur Smith who's like, what? Why why would I do that when I can continue to establish it? The Chicago Bears, like the <laughs> run heaviest team of all time, keep trailing in matchups. So there is a world where, like, I'm with you guys that I I think the play is Deion Jackson, but my confidence level in either of these players is very low. Yeah, I would feel uh, the only way I'd feel okay with the Deion Jackson situation is if I'm in a two-flex league and I've got a second flex available. Sure. I'm willing to take that chance. Uh, another reminder for you, no live stream this weekend with the holiday, and uh, so we won't be having Sunday live. We will be back the following week. Correct. On New Year's Day with uh, a Sunday Live. The rankings, the start, sit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Oh, boy. Let's do it. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, gentlemen. When I woke up this morning, I had the little adrenaline drop of oh crap i have to get shamed again today <laughs> that's how i'm that's how what you, fridays mean to you? that's how used to friday i am of late so um it didn't go that way last week i i handled my business actually won it and i super handled my business i dominated mike yeah. by less than a point uh sorry mike i think he, that's that's now twice where yeah you've you've where, had, where andy was the winner and then it was me and you separated by a fraction of a point. Yeah, do better, man. You still remember how to do this? You ready? Yeah, I think so. Wheel of Shame. Give me that wheel. Spin it. All right. Where do we got? We got Surf's Up, Oompa Loompa. Duck, duck face. face. Oh, Grinch. Perfection. Oh, the Grinch. The fix is in. The, the Grinch. Duck, the duck, fix duck. is in. Now, what, ex the what? Grinch. How much Grinch? Oh, it's actually the Grinch. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very nice. Oh, it's, it's already Christmas. shedding all over the place. <laughs> just, just 
just uh, yeah, yeah, we've got. Oh my god. Look some, this, oh, the, 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 the air. I don't think you can really see it. Um, We're breathing in some Grinch hair. It's kind of like when you watch a rainy game, you can't see the rain on mm -hmm. the broadcast, and then you go to a different angle, and you're like, whoa, it is pouring, but yeah. you just can't see it. But right like, now, we are breathing in. Good luck, in. Mike. The asbestos we, is, is there. We are breathing in tiny green hairs that are floating everywhere. <laughs> that is actually a really Woo. nice Grinch mask. Woo. Right on. <laughs> Uh, put on those, you know, put on them gloves. I, I'm trying to get my lineup up here. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah you, can, you yeah, can pull that up fine. first. Right. But, um, well done. I I am really impressed by it. Right. This is like the Jim Carrey Grinch mask. And I, I understand he went through like eight hours of makeup. I want, yeah, you just did this in seconds. Saved a lot of time. And let the record show Al Borland was so benevolent that he cut you a mouth hole today. There wasn't one. There was no. How would you make a mask without a mouth hole? There there's, was no mouth hole. There's a having done this segment for two years. There's a shocking amount of masks without <laughs> mouth holes that really get in our way Woo. of being able to have great costumes here. He looks great, and you I, wore the red. I was gonna say I mean, this, you look outstanding. We keep. How do you feel? Uh, the, I feel like I look on the outside how I feel <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> da 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 grunch. <laughs> All, All right, right, well, let's dig in. I, uh, I'll i kick it off. Quarterback. Also, visibility is limited. <laughs> yes, yes, because of the fake eyes covering your real ones. <laughs> I can't um, see. <laughs> he's grabbing his face. I love this. And and it, I'm telling you, the red hoodie brings it all together. This is great. Um, I'm going Patrick Mahomes. Oh, oh, baby. I'm taking Patrick Mahomes, 8,400 at home at Kansas City. Him and Josh Allen were neck and neck in DraftKings cost it's the most expensive quarterback on the week i'm taking the one without the wind i absolutely love that pick i think he is worth every single cent there are only two quarterbacks that i considered going with this week one was patrick mahomes the other was the exact opposite gardner Minshew at 4800 that's what you did that is the quarterback that i have gone with to build up elsewhere gardner Minshew, baby all right. Let's so. take those discounts and see what we can do. I was going to say, now we've got, as we set up the rest of these lineups, uh, I'm staring at the Grinch over here. <laughs> you can't see. You can't do anything. Well, it's like, great. The the part of the eye is just, it, I can't get it to pop out. It's just <laughs> going directly into my eyeball. <laughs> that sounds awful. They really uh, want to get you in character. Okay. So I think we're good. The problem now is I spent 8400 and you spent 4800 mm -hmm. So there, there's a big gap there. Uh, my running backs. I couldn't. I didn't want to go with this player, but I had to because you both had to have. Oh, of course, so Derrick yeah, Henry. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is in all three of our lineups. Eighty six hundred. I can't not do it. Um, it's too risky in cash. And now you're out of money. Yeah, like, you, so, you had to go to Ross. So I'm actually going with Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon is fifty nine hundred at home with my quarterback. That is the stack that I built out. He's a wide receiver and a running back slot. I absolutely love that pick. I had him in a couple lineups. I didn't end up with him. I have Derrick Henry as well because, of course, against the Tennessee uh, against the Houston Texans. I'm very afraid of this next name. And the next name is Dalvin Cook. Okay. Um, I, I went with Dalvin Cook at 7,200 at home against the Giants. I think he is a smash play. All right, Mike, who do you have? Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook. <laughs> oh, okay. very nice. I like your roster so far, Mike. So all three of you are the same. My wide receivers – DK Metcalf. Oh, man. For Seattle, 7,100. Darius Slayton in Minnesota, 5,200. And then this is where I saved some money, 3,900. Ooh. Jahan Dotson mm -hmm. for okay. Washington against okay. the 49ers. Had him in a couple lineups as well. Dotson. Dotson. We've got Dotson here. Uh, I have uh, DK Metcalf as well. This oh, is a, bummer. This is a player that this morning I decided I just had to smash Dang in it. my lineup. In order to smash him in, I had to save a bunch of money <sighs> all the way down to this. This is my see if you can find out where I <laughs> where I save some cash. Khalif Raymond at 3100 because I also have Jamar Chase. I know it's in New England, but I'm, look, Jamar Chase it. is just too good. I get it. So I paid up. So I've got Jamar Chase, DK Metcalf, and Khalif Raymond. Mike? It's really humid in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, my face is covered in... Why do you think the Grinch is so grouchy? I understand now. Uh, DK Metcalf is in my lineup. No! At 7,100. No! Uh, the Sun God, Amon Ross mm. St. Brown. Yeah. 7,800 against the Carolina Panthers. And then to get some correlation on the other side and save some money, baby, Lockjaw. 
Terrence really? Marshall at 3,600. Yeah, he was he was in my lineup earlier in the week. Terrence Marshall at 3,600 is one of the best values of the week. We ride. Wow, that's fun. All right. Uh, my tight end, you mentioned that it was probably going to be my tight end. I went with the 2,600 Isaiah Likely. Baltimore, two tight end sets. No Devin Duvernay anymore. So I saved a lot of money on Isaiah. My flex is DeAndre Swift at 5,500. Oh, you sucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Detroit. That. Against Carolina, DeAndre Swift, nine targets last week. And then my defense, no money left, right on the money. The Saints, 2,800 against oh, that's the nice. Cleveland Browns. Yeah, yeah, that's nice and safe. Oh, that's really, that's, that's really nice. Um, I have Jordan Aikens at 2,900 at tight end, saved money there. For flex, I went with J.K. Dobbins uh, at oh, 50. Are you freaking kidding me? No. Okay. Why? Uh, Jordan Akins and J.K. Dobbins are oh, in my lineup. All right, so we have a lot of similarities. Uh, how about all the of e them? How about the Eagles' the defense? Philadelphia Eagles are my defense. So you're telling me the only difference in our lineup is basically Jamar Chase and Khalif Raymond against uh, Amon Ra and uh, Lockjaw. Oh, how interesting! <laughs> okay, this does not bode well for me. Well, I love your lineup, Mike. <laughs> your lineup is fantastic. Thank you. That's wild. That's wild. So. All right, that'll do it. Mike is enjoying himself inside of his mask. That was the Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings More than you Sportsbook. Know. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Merry Christmas, everybody. Enjoy the holiday the holiday season. Enjoy your families mm -hmm. and all of the fun and the festivities and the food and the football and the good winning. Luck. The and winning. The good luck. Yeah. Fancy football title time. Let's do it. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.